morning, boys and girls. We're back with math. Um, today we're going to do lesson 10.2, like I told you before on our um, other workbook, on the other video. And uh, we're going to make picture graphs. And our essential question today is how do you make a picture graph to answer a question? So on our first lesson for this week, yesterday, we saw that we can use picture graphs to answer questions. Now we are going to um, get some information and we are going to make picture graphs. We're going to see how we made them. All right. So, um, over here you have a picture graph. It looks a little bit different from the ones that you saw yesterday, but it's all right. We're going to read together these uh, blue words right over here at the bottom. And it says, um, Asaph has six baseballs. He has four bats. So I want you to listen. Asaph has six baseballs. The baseballs are over here. There are six baseballs. I'm going to put the number six over here because I don't want you to forget. And I don't want you, I don't want to forget either. And, um, well, he also has four bats. The bats are over here. We're going to put four over here so we both remember. Now, um, what we're going to do... Oh, there's one more question. I'm sorry. Let's go back really quick over here. And he says, does he have more baseballs or bats? Have children draw circles? So that's my job. That's what you're going to do. All right, boys and girls. So six. We're going to draw circles to show that Asaph has six baseballs. So we say one... Two, three, four, five, and six. And now for the bats, we know that Asaph has four bats. So we go over here. One, two, three, and four. We already put the information that we have um, that they gave us on the picture graph. And now we are going to find out, boys and girls, which object has more. Which object has more? Do we have more baseballs or do we have more bats? And if you can see, if you can see the numbers, you can actually look at the numbers and compare them. Which one is a greater number? And if you said six, you're very right. We circle the baseball because the baseball is the baseball is the object that we have the most of. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the page because now we are beginning a new lesson. I want you to look at this. It says, are there more black or white sheep in the picture? Make a picture graph to find out. I want you to look at, your, at the picture. And I want you to notice how there's a black sheep that is um, has already been crossed out. And it's crossed out already because um, we already used it right here. We already used it on, on this graph, on this picture graph. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue counting the black. How many more black sheep do we have here? That reminds, that reminds me of the sun. Black sheep, black sheep, na 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 wool. I can I can remember all the, all the words in the sun. All right, so we already um, count, counted this one. We're going to continue counting. We have one, two, and three black sheep. So we come over here and we draw two more circles. So uh, you can also trace this one in order that we can have three sheep. Three black sheep. One, two, and three, just like in your picture. Now we're going to count the white sheep. How many white sheep do we have? We have one, two, three, four, and five. You can cross them out if you want. We're going to put them here. We're going to draw circles for them. One, two, three, four, and five white sheep. Now, don't forget that each circle is going to stand for one sheep. Very important. Now, it says over here, there are more blank sheep. What sheep do we have the most of? White or black? It's definitely white. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to copy the word white because we have more white sheep than black sheep. White. All right, boys and girls. So we're moving on to the real deal. Now we're going to move on to number one, to our first um, picture graph. And it says, do more children like cats or dogs ask 10 friends which pet they like better draw one circle for each child's answer okay in this picture graph we are going to have to come out with our own numbers because we're not in class right if we were in class we were going to have a big discussion about who likes cats who likes dogs but 
um, I'm going to have to come out with our own numbers so um, we can actually do this activity. So how about if we say that for cats, for cats, let me see, how about if five kids say that they like cats and then dogs, seven children say said that they like dogs. So we have cats and dogs. Let's go um, to the picture graph then. We're going to draw circles. Don't forget, each circle stands for one child. So we're going to say cats. How many kids like cats? Five. So we say one, two, three, four, and five. How about dogs? How many kids said they like dogs? Seven. You're right. So we're going to put this into our picture graph. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, let's go ahead and answer our first question. And our first question says, how many children chose cat? How many children chose cat? We have it right here. We're going to count one, two, three, four, and five. So we write it down. Five children like cats. Let's see how many children like dogs. How many children chose dogs? Let's count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We come over here with right seven. And here we go. Number three, boys and girls. Which pet did more children chose? We're going to circle one of these cute pictures. All right. So which one do you think that most um, of the kids picked or chose? You're right if you said dogs, right? Because seven is greater than five. So we're going to go ahead and circle dogs. All right. Now we're moving on to our next page. And here we have another picture graph. Let's see what it says. It says, which activity do the most children like best? Ask 10 friends. Draw one circle for each child's answer. Now, we don't have our friends with us. You might have a bunch of people, um, like a bunch of family members at home. But um, I'm going to come up with my own numbers, all right? So we're going to say that, um, let's say that seven, seven kids chose reading. Oh, let's say that five kids chose computer. But, and let's say that eight children chose uh, sports, chose to play outside, right? As their favorite activity. So for reading, reading, we're going to put these numbers into the graph. Still, don't forget that each circle stands, stands for one child. So we're going we're gonna to put this into the graph. Seven, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, five. How many children chose computer? Five. One, two, three, four, and five. And let's see how many kids chose sports. Um, the number is eight. So we're going to put this into our picture graph. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I see that these, this picture graph is pretty tight, right? Because the numbers are pretty close to each other. All right. So now we need to answer questions about this graph we just made. We're going to go ahead and read the questions. Use graphs. Use the picture graph to answer the question. So question number four says, how many children shows books or reading? Let's see. How many children? Here's reading. So we count next to the reading first. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven children chose reading. And now we're going to do number five. Hmm. It's getting trickier now. How many children chose computer and sports? Here we go. So now this is your keyword. You have and. And mean to boys and girls that you're not comparing it. You're adding them together. You want to know how many all together. So we're going to count computers and sports together. First, we begin with the top one, which is computers. And then we keep counting um, for sports. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So now we know that 13 children shows um, computer and sports together. Another way that you can do this is by adding 5 and 8. And the answer should still be 13. All right. So we're moving on to number six. I like this one because we only have to circle, right? All right. Which activity did the most children show? Which activity did the most children show? Circle. Um, let's go back to the graph. Let's see. Which one do you think was the one that most, um, most of the children chose? And you're right if you said sport. Yes? Sports. Sports is um, the activity that most of the kids chose. Now we're moving on to number seven. Did all your classmates make picture graphs that look the same? Circle yes or no. Well, you know what? This question is kind of hard for us because we don't have access to see what everyone did. Um, what we did is was that we chose our own numbers and... Um, and we did our picture graph based on these numbers that we chose over here. It's all right. You can leave it the way it is. You can leave it like that. We're not putting an answer for number seven. Uh, number eight, think smarter. Write your own question about the graph. All right. So we can come up with our own question about the graph. Let's see. We already um, we already sh we already circled the, the activity that the most children chose. How about if we want to find out the activity that the least children shows. So that's what we're going to write. Which activity did the most children chose? That's what we're going to write. Which activity? You can actually copy the word from here. We're just going to change a word. Which activity did most... Most, uh oh, no more space. Most children shows. Oh, sorry about that. Oh no, no, it wasn't the most. It was the least. All right, we can we can fix that. It's all right. You you can erase, and I'm just writing with a pen, and it's it's really hard to erase. The least. Don't forget, we're not we don't want um. We already had that question, the most. We want to go for the least now. So which activity did least children shows? And I was supposed to put shows over here, but I didn't. I'm sorry. It's really hard. I'm looking through the screen, and it's so hard to, to see. All right. So question number nine. Look at the question you wrote. This is the question we wrote. Answer your question. So let's read our question one more time. Which activity? the least children shows shows um let's go back to our picture graph which one was the activity that the least of the children chose if you said computer you were right computer comes over here and we're gonna write it down computer that's the activity that the least of the children chose and i know you loved computers because you love what mr manny comes to class and you go like, yay, right? But I know that, that you also love to play outside. That's why I made sports the one that the most children chose. All right. So we're going um, to come over here. And we're going to do um, our last page for lesson 10.2. And he says, Matt made this picture graph to show the paint colors his friends like best. So these are the, the three colors that he used in his picture graph. He put blue, red, and green. And it really looks like if the paint is there, right? Now, this one is already done for us. So we don't have to come up, come up with our own numbers. We know that for blue, we have five. For red, we have three. And for green, we have two. But we still have to answer the questions about that. Do not forget that each circle stands for one child that shows each of these colors. And um, when another thing that I will have to tell you, when when you do this type of picture graph among a group of students or a group of people, 
people are only allowed to vote one time. Just so you know, because on the next page, we're going to talk about that. All right. So let's do question number 10. How many children shows a paint color? Huh? How many children participated in these um in in these questions showing the their favorite color for that boys and girls we can account all of the circles because we want to know how many children um said their favorite color so here we go we go one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and we can say the ten children ten children chose a paint color and now we can go to number 11. Number 11 says, how many fewer children shows green than blue? Now, we're not, it doesn't say and here. So you should know already that this is not addition. This is subtraction. Why? Because we need to compare two numbers. We need to find out the difference between green and blue. So for that, we need subtraction, not addition. Um, so once again, our colors are green and blue. We go back to our picture graph and we're going to be comparing the blue with the green. So you can do these two ways. Don't forget, this is your green and at the top you have your blue. So basically, all you have to do is compare. How many empty spaces do we have here compared to the blue? You can actually see it. One, two, and three. Three empty spaces. The other way that you can do it is by using the numbers. You say five minus two five take away two um you can draw five circles one two three four five you take away two one and two and you have three left when we did it the other way by comparing the empty spaces from the green um with the blue it was also three another way that you can do this subtraction is by counting from two all the way to five because when we take away when we subtract we come from the shortest number from the um from the least number from the smallest number to the greater number all right so we're moving on to number 12 and this is our last question it says complete the picture graph to show the number of flowers so let's see here we have a vase with flowers we're going to find out how many red tulips how many yellow tulips so let's go ahead and count our first flower is the red. Let's count how many red tulips. We have one, two, and three red tulips. So don't forget, each circle stands for one flower. So we have three red tulips. We draw three circles. Now we're going to count for the yellow. How many yellow tulips are there? We have one, two, three, and four. If you want to count from the top, you can also do so. Um, you have four yellow tulips. Two, three, and and four and that was it boys and girls for um 10.2 we're gonna take a look really quick at the math homework and at 10.2 practice and homework and then you do it on your own right so this is your homework boys and girls um here we have another picture graph it says which dinosaur do the most children like best ask 10 friends draw one circle for each child's answer now, I want you to, these, to do this on your own because I want you to go around the house and ask your brothers, your sisters, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, whoever you have at home. And I want you to find out um, which one is your favorite dinosaur, Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, or Apatosaurus. The Apatosaurus is the one with the long neck. And it's so hard for me to say these words that you have no idea. But if you have friends that you can even talk on the phone to, you can ask them on the phone, which one is your favorite dinosaur? You tell them, here, which one um, which one do you like the most? And you can draw a circle for each of the of the people that you ask. Um, so don't forget, each circle stands for one child, one person. All right, and then based on your uh, answers, you're going you're gonna to write how many children chose the... Tyrannosaurus Rex, how many children, um, or no, which dinosaur did the most um, people or children chose? Circle. And over here, you're going to write your own question about the graph. I know this one is kind of hard for you. Um, so how about if we do it together? Write one question about the graph. We already, um, we already asked 
how many children or how many people shows the Tyrannosaurus and uh, which one was the, the one that most people shows. How about if we ask the same question again? Which dinosaur did, um, based on this one, you can do it. Which dinosaur did the list people shows? The least. I'm not going to put children because you're going to ask different people. People shows. And we put a question mark at the end because this is a question. All right. So now we're moving on to number four. Number four. Write a question that can be answered by making a picture graph. Write a question. So we already use wrote a question and I don't want you to get tired of questions. So we're going to move on to our next page. All right, boys and girls. So here you have a picture graph is already done for you. Which hand do you use to eat? ¿Qué mano usamos para comer? So um, I want you to remember this is your right hand. Sorry, this is your left hand. So your left hand is the one that you can make a letter L with it. This is letter L. You see, if you can make a letter L with your hand, that means that that's your left hand. Over here, I'm going to switch hands now. This is my right hand. I write and I eat with my right hand because I'm right-handed. So can you make an L with your letter hand, with your um, right hand? No, you can't. So this is your right hand. Your left hand is the one that you can make a letter L with. All right. So you answer this one. You need to count how many children use the right hand. This is your keyword, right hand, right hand. You're going to count for the right hand and then write the answer. Number five, how many more children use the right hand than their left? Ah, so we're not adding here. Don't forget, we are comparing. What are the numbers that we are, we are comparing? We're comparing the numbers on the left and the numbers on the right. And they're actually giving you a space here to write a subtraction. When you are comparing, you need to take away. You're not putting everything together. You need to subtract. And uh, these are the numbers that we have. We have one, two, three. And then for the right hand, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I want you to remember when you are writing a subtraction, your greater number has to be first because you cannot take away from three. You cannot take away eight from three, but you can take away three from eight. And I want you to answer this subtraction. Eight, take away three. Your answer is going to be here and also over here. Finally, we're going to write the sum. We're going to add 6 plus 3. Write the answer. And then uh, last but not least, we're going to write the difference. Write how many tens? Six, 60 minus 20. 60 take away 20. I, I want you to go ahead and try to put one number on top of the other one. 60 take away 20. We're going to take, um, we're going to subtract from the ones first and then from the tens. You're going to write your answer here and here. So there you go, boys and girls. Um, I leave you to your homework now. Go ahead and um, answer all your questions. If you have any questions, don't forget you can call me or you can text me. All right. See you later for social studies. Bye.